Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Julia Harrison, and I'm director of the Frost Center for Canadian Studies and Indigenous Studies. And I would like to welcome you all here this evening um, to the first of the North at Trent 2012 lecture series. And before we begin tonight with uh, both our speaker and uh, some other remarks, I would like to call on President Stephen Franklin to make a few remarks and welcome us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Julia, and uh, welcome, everyone. This is a great pleasure for me to introduce the, uh, the series, and uh, Julia will return to uh, introduce our guest speaker for the evening. But I wanted to start with uh, just a few remarks about the, uh, the origin of the Roberta Bondar Fellowship. And uh, what happened, I think, was in the 1980s, there was a, uh, uh, a federal grant that was provided. It, was to what is now the Frost Center for Canadian Studies and Indigenous Studies. And it was to create a focus on Northern Studies at Trent University. And over that subsequent decade, there were a number of lectures, and they were supported by these funds. Uh, each one brought to Trent to scholars and specialists in a range of academic fields with expertise on political, historical, social, cultural, and environmental issues in Northern Canada. The series itself was launched by Justice Thomas Berger, and uh, he's well known for his role in the uh, Northern history as the uh, chair of the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline Inquiry in the 70s. And I was thinking today as I noticed that another pipeline inquiry has uh, at least uh, resulted in some controversy uh, on the news today. I don't know if people have heard about the Keystone Pipeline, which was proposed for the uh, movement of uh, oil sands uh, petroleum down, to, or uh, a bitumen down to uh, a series of uh, refineries in Oklahoma and Texas, that that was delayed at least for another year while a, a new environmental assessment occurs. Uh, this series brought uh, some of Canada's most impressive Aboriginal leaders from the north to Trent, and uh, these included Matthew Kuhn Kum, who is a Trent graduate and a former Assembly of First Nations chief, uh, George Blondin, who is a respected Dene elder, politician and an author, and Governor General award-winning author jo Joseph Boyden, uh, and Mary Simon, who then later became Trent, Trent's Chancellor. Uh, in 2007, uh, to encourage new scholars in the field, uh, two faculty members, Peter Lafleur uh, from Geography, Peter's here tonight, and John Wadlin from Canadian Studies, uh, shifted the focus of this Northern Initiative. And uh, they created the Roberta Bondar Fellowship in Northern and Polar Studies, and recommended the establishment of a teaching and research award to bring to Trent for up to two years a new scholar whose research and teaching would focus on northern and polar regions. And the fellowship was named after Roberta Bondar, who was our chancellor, very popular, very generous chancellor at, uh, at Trent, concluded her term just as uh, I was arriving in 2008. Uh, but she has a very strong interest and commitment to Canada's north, and tonight we will welcome, Julia will provide the introduction of uh, Elise Legat, who is our Roberta Bondar Fellow for the next two years. Uh, before that introduction, I just would like to thank those who served on the uh, Roberta Bondar Selection Committee, which included Dr. Jillian Balfour from our Sociology Department, Dr. Lynn Davis from our uh, Indigenous Studies Department, and Jonathan Bordeaux from Cultural Studies, Stephen Bocking from uh, Environmental Resource Studies. Uh, the Undergraduate Department in Canadian Studies will be jointly hosting Elise, uh, the third Roberta Bondar Fellow, uh, over the course of the next two years, and she will teach undergraduate courses or one undergraduate course in Canadian Studies and be a resource for students and faculty at Trent with research interests in the North. And she will give two public lectures, and so I will now turn to Julia to formally introduce our guest and to uh, begin our first of the two lecture series. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Stephen and I are holding this microphone, and Elise will be wearing it, because we are being webcast to the globe as we speak, so it's all very exciting. Um, but thank you very much, Stephen. I want to begin by acknowledging our thanks to the Roberta Bondar Fellowship Fund, uh, the Undergraduate Department in Canadian Studies, the School of Graduate Studies, and Trail College. And I particularly also want to thank Kathy Scholl, who is the Administrative Assistant in the Frost Centre, for all of her hard work 
uh, and attention to making this evening and the entire North Lecture Series, which will unfold this term, I'm sure will come off smoothly entirely thanks to Kathy. Um, tonight's talk uh, is uh, part of that series, but then uh, we'll also be hearing at the end of the talk about the Northern Studies Colloquium, uh, which is a student initiative, um, which is an important part of, of focusing and privileging uh, work that's going on in Trent on the North. But on behalf of the Frost Center and the Undergraduate Program in Canadian Studies who are hosting the third Roberta Bondar Fellow, I would like to welcome you all here this evening. Dr. Elise Leggett was the unanimous choice of the selection committee for the third Roberta Bondar Fellowship, and she's an anthropologist who approaches her work from the premise that history, place, and knowledge systems are central to understanding and about how we leave, live our lives. They are key to understanding cultural and social processes, and particularly at the community level. Elise Leggett is committed to the principle that doing research that addresses community concerns will better inform academic and, sci and the sciences more broadly, and, and the theoretical understandings that they grapple with. In 2002, uh, based on over 10 years' work, grounded in this philosophy with her work with the Klitschow, or formerly dog group communities, she began work on her doctorate. And in 2008, she received her PhD in anthropology from the University of Aberdeen, Scotland. Her thesis was titled, Walking the Land, Feeding the Fire, on becoming and being knowledgeable among the Klitschow Dene. Dene. She worked with Tim Ingold, and for those of you in the field of Northern Studies in the social sciences and anthropology will know of Tim's work, um, those of you in, in uh, uh, geography. And he also at Aberdeen has pulled together a very interesting and important collective of Northern scholars, which I think is a community that Trent should ha help um, think about emulating. Harvey Fite was, in fact, Elise's external examiner, which is important in this context because Harvey Fite was one, spoke as part of one of the Northern Chair Lecture series, so yet another Trent connection. In her dissertation, Elise explored what it meant to say, as the elders did, quote, to be knowledgeable is to be from the land. This work built on her MA in anthropology from the University of Calgary, which was on the political analysis of a Northern Canadian community and she began her work uh, as it, with a BA in archaeology from the University of Calgary. As an independent scholar and consultant for nearly 20 years in the Northwest Territories, much of her work with the Klitschow community, she has worked on a wide range of projects. These include the development of traditional knowledge research and, and a monitoring in collaboration with the Klitschow community, which will be the substance of her talk tonight, documenting the rules and expectations governing behavior associated with caribou, She's worked on a project about uh, place names and stories as ind indicators of biogeographical knowledge. And worked on a large project about the caribou, but particularly uh, understanding caribou around what was then, uh, back in the late 90s, the proposed Divic Diamond Mine. She has taught in a range of institutions, the University of Aberdeen, Aurora College uh, in the Northwest Territories, which uh, at one time was teaching courses that, in fact, were accredited through Trans Native Studies uh, pro program. Uh, the University of Calgary, and she's taught anthropology courses there, as well as outreach courses on local reserve communities. And she's given a range of uh, courses and seminars to various agencies in the government in the Northwest Territories. She has served as a cross-cultural advisor on the McKenzie Valley uh, Environmental Impact Review. She worked as a program and research director on traditional knowledge, a traditional knowledge and heritage program with the Treaty 11 Council. She was the director of policy and planning in the culture and communications uh, within the government of the Northwest, Northwest Territories. And she even served as the assistant, uh, acting assistant deputy minister of culture uh, in the territories. She's presented at conferences uh, and in various fora, including Trent when she visited us here a few years ago. Uh, at Calgary and Aberdeen at various conferences in the U.S., as well as very much in the communities within she, with she, whom she works in the North. Her thesis is coming out as a publication, as a book, called Walking the Land, Feeding the Fire, with uh, knowledge and stewardship among the Klinchel, mm -hmm. and it will be produced by the, uh, published by the University of Arizona Press, and in the fall, her second talk will be based around that. There's a wide range of papers published, uh, many of them jointly authored with the community researchers she has trained, and with other academics who have traveled to the North to draw on her knowledge 
uh, of working with Indigenous communities in the Northwest Territories for over 20 years. As the Roberta Bondar Fellow, Dr. Leggett will be at TRAIL and Trent more broadly over the next two years. She will teach, as uh, Stephen mentioned, a course in Canadian Studies, uh, which she hopes to run as a field course in 2013. The fellowship will allow her to make connections in, with a range of students, both graduate and undergraduate, and faculty interested in field-based northern research. She will continue actively to work with her work with the Klitschow communities throughout this time, uh, as well as spending time in the archives at the Smithsonian and a place that I love to, to spend time well in, as well in the Hudson's Bay Archives in Winnipeg. But the central focus of her work during the fellowship will be spent writing up for a wider audience at the direction of the elders she has worked with, much of the information she has collected with them over the last two decades. It is their desire to have this material known more widely. Elise Leggett has the privilege of fulfilling this request for them, and the Roberta Bondar Fellowship will provide her a space in the community to encourage her within this work. Please join me in welcoming her to Trent. Her inaugural talk tonight as part of the Roberta Bondar Fellowship is titled, Licho Denny, Monitoring the Land. Well, that sounded impressive. I'd like to know me. <laughs> I did. Oh, can you hear? Can you all hear me? Because sometimes I have a tendency to speak softly. So if you, ah, lots of stuff. That's okay. Okay. So thank you, uh, President Franklin, and thank you, Professor Harrison. I would like to dedicate this talk. Uh, this evening to Harry Mantla, a Klinchu elder on our regional elders committee with whom I've worked. Harry died suddenly of a heart attack the day before yesterday. Harry was a young, young elder and um, <laughs> he was a full-time trapper, hunter, fisher, who helped at the school because he was very um, dedicated to the young. Although I am sad to be missing his funeral, I am very happy to be here this evening. Um, just one second. I find the light so bright I can't read. I'm wondering if we could just, maybe we'll have to turn the lights off. Yeah, that might be better, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, a little bit. It was in my eyes, yeah. So, um, although I'm sad to be missing his funeral, which I am very much 